following program is rated PG. The following program deals with mature subject matter and contains scenes of sexuality. Viewer discretion is advised. would it be? Um, I don't know. I, I didn't hear the door. Are you okay, Mom? You look white as a ghost. And why is it so dark in here? Oh, I didn't realize how late it was. <laughs> you know how time flies when you're at the computer. Did you find anything? No. You know, I'm not certain that uh, the internet is the way to look for a new job. You got a point there, Mom. Especially if you're looking for one in a chat room. Now, what are you really doing on the computer, Mom? Now, what kind of question is that, Charity? Uh, you look so depressed every time you use it. It's like you're looking for something that you never find. You, young lady, have a very active imagination. I'm telling you what I see. And before we even got the computer, you used to spend all your time looking through the personal ads in the paper. Well, maybe I'm looking for Mr. Wright. I don't think so, Mom. If you were, you'd let us settle in one place and meet people instead of always moving us around from town to town. Sorry, Charity. I know this is really hard for you. If you're scared of something, tell me what it is, and we'll deal with it together. Mrs. Benner, are you okay? I'm sorry, Rosie. My mind wandered. I was just telling you about my twin sister. <sighs> yeah, that's right. You were. Do you have any sisters? No. No, actually, I don't know. I don't know if I have any relatives. That's silly. Tabitha, you old witch! Where are you? Everybody knows that they have family. Everybody but me. Grace had that same look on her face when I rescued her from that fire 20 years ago. She looks lost. I remember asking her where she was from, what her name was, how the fire started. She didn't have any answers? Her mind was a total blank. She had no memory of anything before that day. I wouldn't even know her name was Grace, except I found this partially burnt piece of paper in her pocket with the word Grace written on it. Sam, I can't even imagine what you're going through. But if it were Eve, I'd do exactly what I'm doing. I mean, you'd do anything you could to keep that look off your wife's face. Eve, you're a doctor. I mean, there's got to be some way to give Grace some answers. I'm afraid you need a crystal ball. And my medical bag didn't come with one. Sit down, girls. Unless you've changed your minds. No, I want to hear my fortune. Come on, Whitney. Wait, um... How much are you going to charge us? My fee is uh, whatever you'd like to give me. See, Whitney, it can't be a con job. She doesn't even know how much to charge. There, now. We can start. This hasn't been a very good day for you, has it? I thought you were going to tell me my future, not my past. But you see, my dear, the future is based on the past on what's already been set in motion, the things we cannot change. You're right, Winnie. This is all hocus-pocus mumbo-jumbo. Was it your smart mouth that cost you your job at the Burger Hut? Or was it the fire you started in the kitchen? <laughs> no offense, ma'am, but if that's the best you can do, I I'm not impressed. Everybody at the carnival must have heard about the fire by now. Maybe. I wonder if everyone knows about you spilling milkshakes and barbecue sauce all over a certain young man. Here, this will get all the dust off. Get her away from me. No, it's all right. It's a water. I think we should go now, Teresa. How did you know about that? I know a lot about you, Teresa. And the young man. Although, I don't think you want to know what he's doing 
at this moment. Yes, I do. Tell me. Well, he's with a young woman right now. In bed. Well, I guess I asked for that. Who is she? The girl made an impression on me. I never got her name. I was too busy running for my life in case she had anything else to dump on me. Oh, her, that crazy local girl. <laughs> yes, Gwen, that crazy local girl. Well, I'm glad the only impression she made was on your head and not on your heart. <laughs> How could she take my heart when you already own it? How do you mean that, Ethan? Of course. <laughs> mm. No, I'm really glad I came home. So am I. Even if I can't believe you cut short a shopping trip in Paris just for me. <laughs> I can go to Paris anytime. Yeah. We'll go together. On our honeymoon. Give me a chance to see Sheridan. Well, I'm sure she would... <gasps> Did you just say honeymoon? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you asked her to marry you. Uh, I can't believe you said yes. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. <laughs> the ring is just beautiful, Jean-Luc. It's exquisite. You know, I know your family can afford much better, much bigger. Oh, I, I don't care about my family's wealth. I never have. They know nothing about what's important in life. Loving someone. Having a real, honest relationship. They don't have a clue. You know, it's very difficult for me to imagine that uh, you came from a family like that. My nephew Ethan and I used to try to figure out why we turned out so different from the others. What's the difference? Mon amour. As long as you did it. <laughs> Kiss him, Miss Crane. This is going to be the last time. I would hold the hand of the one who could leave me places and kiss the lips of the one who could sing so sweet. September is my favorite month in Paris. Is that too soon for a wedding? Tomorrow wouldn't be too soon to make you my one. Stop! Driver, I don't see it. It's it. Is somebody calling, Jules? No, 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 I know. It's a woman, but I can't, I can't see her face. Well, maybe it's someone we know. Driver, stop the carriage. Oh. Finally, Ethan Crane utters the H word. Could the dreaded M word be far behind? Ethan? I meant someday that we'd have our honeymoon in Paris. So I jumped the gun again, didn't I? I do love you, Gwen. Yes, and I know that you actually believe that you will marry me someday. I just hope it's before my hair turns gray. I'm not that bad, am I? You're worth it, whatever it is. It, you just have this hang-up about marriage. It'll happen, Gwen. Well, if that's the case, Ethan, if that is how you really feel, then what is standing in the way? It's not our families. They're both chomping at the bit for a Crane-Hotchkiss merger. And you say it's not because you want to get out and meet someone else. Why would so I want to meet someone else when I've already met you? I don't know. What is it, then? I guess... 
I just need more time. I can understand that. It's just... <sighs> what? Tell me. Sometimes I get so scared that this wonderful dream I have of a future with you is, is just going to be that. Just going to be a wonderful dream. Now you're talking nonsense. The only cure for nonsense is more nonsense. I'm going to the carnival. No fears of that crazy girl showing up and attacking you. No way. I'm convinced she's done her worst. There's nothing in there. Nobody's in bed with anybody. Believe what you like. I can see them together clear as day. What kind of fortune is this anyway? Everything you've told me is bad. It, it doesn't matter, Teresa. It's all a bunch of garbage. <laughs> Besides, you're not supposed to care if he's with someone. You're supposed to be getting over him. I'm trying, Whitney. It's not that easy. Can we go now? Yeah. You know where to find me if you want to hear more. I heard enough. Come on, Whitney. Tell me something, Whitney. Why do they use the word love in tennis? Excuse me? You're a tennis player. What does love have to do with the game? How, how do you know I play tennis? It's all right in here. You're an excellent player. I try. Don't be modest, Wit. She's the best. She's going to be in the next Olympics. If she keeps it up. Of course I'm going to keep it up. Tennis is my life. Whatever you say. I don't want to hear any more, Teresa. No, I'm sure she's a fake. Nothing could get in the way of Whitney's dream. Not even death. Murder. A killer in her family. I'm sorry about before. I didn't mean to upset you. I'm fine, Charity. Why are you staring at me? I was just trying to remember how you look when you smile. You know, your whole face lights up, especially your eyes. I still smile. Hardly ever. And you never laugh. It seems like whatever's bothering you is getting worse. Nonsense. Now, don't you have some reading to do? I finished my book. Do you think that I'll ever get to go to school like the other kids? Charity, I thought you liked learning at home with me. I do, Mom. It's just... Sometimes I wonder what it's like to be just, you know, a regular kid. Look, sweetie, we've been through this before. I don't want to have to pull you out of school every time we move. Is that really the reason? Or are you afraid that I'm going to make friends if we stay anywhere long enough? Of course not, sweetheart. I would love for you to have friends. Then why can't I? Why can't we stay anywhere long enough for me to meet anyone? Get to know someone my own age? Are we running from someone? <laughs> now, why would you get an idea like that? We never stay anywhere long. You don't have any friends, and you're always on edge whenever anyone comes to the door. Why? I have to prepare you. <sighs> You've said that before, but you never tell me for what. Charity, don't ask me that. You don't trust me. Of course I do, sweetheart. It's then just... tell me what you're preparing me to do. What Grace was supposed to do, but she got lost before I could tell her. Mom, who's Grace? My sister. You have a sister? I was watching you earlier, and you seem so sad. Well, the child that won the doll earlier said something about being a twin. For some reason, it just struck me really hard. You don't know why? I could have a sister out there and not even know it. I could have a whole family hey, somewhere. You have a family right here. Me, Kay, and Jessica. Nobody could love you more. I know. And it's not that I'm not grateful for all of you. But it's not the same as knowing where you're from, is it? Grace, 
I promise you I will continue searching as long as it takes. They just vanished in the thin air. Well, Simone and Kay are probably up to their usual mischief. Well, it better be harmless mischief. Oh, I'm sure it is. And Whitney hasn't checked in either. Don't worry about Whitney. That's the one daughter who's not going to give us any trouble. A murder? A killer in my family? That's a horrible thing to say. You were right, Whitney. This is a complete waste of time. I didn't bring my friend in here so you could scare her to death. I'm only telling you what I see. Whitney will cause a murder if she continues to pursue her dream of becoming a champion tennis player. That's ridiculous. Whitney wouldn't hurt a fly, much less kill somebody. I didn't say Whitney was gonna commit the murder. Then who? Her daddy. Mr. Russell? That's nuts. Don't listen to her, Whitney. She's nothing but a sick and twisted old woman. You don't know anything. I knew about the young man that you couldn't get out of your system. Lucky guess. You don't even know his name. Is that what you think? Well, look at that. It's spelled out right in here. E-T-H-A-N. Ethan. Ethan Crane. Why didn't you want the driver to stop the carriage earlier? I told you I wanted to come back over here to give you my other surprise. But that girl who was running after us sounded so upset. Even after Diana's death and your accident, you still don't understand. Understand what? That young woman recognized you, Sheridan. There is no doubt in my mind that she was a, a reporter, you know, seeking a story, perhaps even photos of you and I together. <sighs> I never even thought of that. Exactly. Which is why you need me to watch over you. <laughs> oh, I feel so lucky, Jean Luc. <laughs> and foolish. <laughs> why is that? Well, for a moment I thought maybe that woman was a girlfriend of yours and you didn't want me to meet her. <laughs> Mon dieu. What an imagination my future wife has, huh? Jean-Luc! It's Mimi. I know you're in there with your rich American tramp. Open up! I have something I want to tell her. I will not move until you open this door, Jean-Luc. It's time that Mademoiselle Crane hears the truth. My key. Cheetah should never give copies of their keys out. You can run, Jean-Luc, but you can't hide. I will find you. Oh, I just want to stay in your arms forever. Ooh, that can be arranged. But first, I want to give you my little surprise. <gasps> I almost forgot. Where is it? It's over there in the other room. Close your eyes. Okay. I'll be back in a minute. Jean-Luc, your phone. Well, I guess I can answer it. I am going to be his wife. Hello? Hello? Is anybody there? You have a sister? That means I have an aunt. 
What's her name? Where does she live? Can I meet her? Slow down, Charity. This is great. Why didn't you ever tell me? Because I couldn't. Did you have some silly falling out with her when you were young? I bet you anything she's forgotten it all by now. It wasn't a falling out. Grace and I never argued. In fact, we were very close. This is a picture taken of us just after we graduated from high school. That's me. That's Grace. You're twins. Yeah, except for a couple of moles on her left shoulder were identical. The last time I saw her was shortly after this picture was taken. Why? Something happened and Grace couldn't deal with it. She ran off. What happened? Charity, it was so long ago. I tried to find her, but... And then I never heard from her again. I hate to say this, but... Did you ever consider the fact that maybe the reason that you haven't been able to find her is because she's... passed on? No. Grace is alive. If she were dead, I would feel it. She's out there somewhere. I'm going to find her. I haven't had cotton candy in I don't know how many years. You look exactly as you did when we first met. Except for a few tiny lines I've picked up along the way. I don't see any lines. Oh, I love the way you see me, T.C. Russell. In fact, I love you. Mwah. Your leg is bothering you, isn't it? My leg is fine, Eve. I need to get back to my volunteers. Let me guess. His leg? I shouldn't have said anything. Oh, you know TC. He's one of those type of guys that doesn't like to talk about what's bothering him. Reminds me of a big old lion who goes into the brush by himself to lick his wounds. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what he's like. You couldn't have not learned before. You're only a stupid dog. I wish I'd got one of these instead of him. Likewise, if you think you're taking Timmy home to meet your bimbo Barbies, think again, sister. Is your mouth just moving? Are you one of those dolls that can say things? Talk. 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 No. You can't do anything. I didn't touch it. I swear I didn't. How did you know his name is Ethan Crane? It's all spelled out right here. Right next to Whitney's tragic future. You're crazy. You don't know anything about my father. He's the most decent gentleman in the world. He wouldn't kill anyone. But everyone has their breaking point, Whitney. Even your daddy. Of course, the murder wouldn't have to happen if it weren't for you. I would never do anything to hurt him. You will. I'm leaving. Are you coming, Teresa? Yeah, I'm coming. I know Whitney's secret. I know what she doesn't tell anyone, especially her daddy. How dare you do that to my friend? She may be your friend, but there are some things she doesn't tell you. Now, would you like to hear some more about Ethan? No, I don't want to hear anything else out of your nasty mouth. He'll be back. cousins out there somewhere. We might be part of some big, happy, normal family. Charity. I mean it, Mom. You see it on TV all the time. Families reuniting who haven't seen each other in years. We'll go on a talk show. No, we won't. And we can put our names and pictures and ads and newspapers all over the country. I mean, I know it would be expensive, but... Charity, stop. It's not gonna happen. It's too dangerous. 
500 even. What? Oh, hi, TC. I didn't hear what you said. I was just giving you my guess on how many jelly beans I think there are. Sorry, my mind must have wandered. You've been doing a lot of that lately, I hear. You're not going to start giving me a hard time now, are you, TC? I figure if you want to talk about something, you will. Doesn't help anything have people picking at you for answers you don't have. Any of arguing? Nothing serious, just some um, old baggage of mine that she won't let up on, that's all. She probably figures you'd be better off if you uh, opened up more about your past. Funny, isn't it, Grace? Here you are trying like the devil to remember your history. And I wouldn't mind at all if mine was long forgotten. Wait up, Whitney. Come on. You're not going to let what some screwy old fortune teller said ruin your day, are you? I could tell better fortunes with my magic eight ball. But she made it sound so real. And did you fix see your eyes? They were evil, Teresa. Pure evil. Like she enjoyed telling me that my father was going to commit murder. Oh, now you're the one sounding crazy. Okay. If the fortune teller was such a big phony, how does she know about you and your obsession with Ethan Crane? Huh, Teresa? Tell me that. Whose idea was it to come here anyway? Yours. Oh, dude, don't tell me you're getting cold feet. Me? Ethan, my middle name is Braveheart Crane? Not a chance. Even though this is the same carnival where that girl first attacked me. Oh, don't worry. I'll protect you. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. There's no way I could possibly run into her again. Well, didn't you tell me she dumped book on you three times? Thanks for reminding me. Mommy's gonna be so mad at me. I'm never gonna get my allowance again. It was you, wasn't it? You knocked over the table and broke everything. I don't like you. Ah! Guess what? I don't like you either. Ah! Death and destruction, terror and pain. <laughs> oh, I haven't had this nice a day in harmony and I don't know how long. <laughs> Is that Timmy? Oh, must have been the wind. This is Sheridan Crane. If you want Jean-Luc Moulin, he'll be right back. Hello? Naughty girl, you are not supposed to open. What are you doing? Well, your phone was ringing, but I'm not sure anybody's there. I take it this business. Hello? I want to speak with Sheridan. I want to tell her what kind of a man she's with. Can I open my surprise yet? Uh, yes, please do. You're giving Mademoiselle Crane a surprise? A present that should be for me? This is not a good time. Uh, I am in the middle of something important. <gasps> I am important! You told me that you're going to break with Mademoiselle Crane. And instead, you proposed to her. You told me that you're going to marry me. Uh, I'm sure I can alleviate your concern when we next speak. I will not be put off, Jean-Luc. I want to see you now. Well, tonight, uh, it's out of the question. I call you tomorrow, first thing. Goodbye now. Oh, Jean-Luc. You like it? <laughs> it's beautiful. It's so elegant. I can't wait to wear it. Well, you don't have to. We are going to a ball tonight. We are going to celebrate our engagement. Oh. <laughs> mm. I was making pain! that he's taking his rich American heiress. Well, I have news for you, Jean-Luc. You're not the only one who can give surprises. You're sure you didn't pay the man at the booth to win this? I'll have you know I want it fair and square. I hit every one of those fuzzy ducks right between the eyes. <laughs> oh, well, you're just a man of many talents, Ethan Crane. Oh, I thought you knew that. <laughs> Here. 
Hello? Gwen, it's me. Sheridan, hi! Let me talk to her. Wait, wait your turn. Your nephew's trying to grab the phone from me. I'll talk to him in a minute, but you first. Remember that bet we made about who would make it to the altar first? I remember. I won, Gwen. What? Sean Luke proposed today. I'm getting married. <laughs> well, say something, Gwen. That's that's wonderful, Sheridan. I'm I'm thrilled for you. What what, what is she saying? Here, here. You better tell him yourself. Your nephew's acting like a ten-year-old. Here. What's going on? That's terrific. So you said yes? Men can be so thick. Of course I said yes. I'm madly in love with him. Okay, just tell him. If he ever thinks about disimporting you, he's gonna have to answer to me. He's not like the other men I've known. And besides, you're the one that better not let Gwen down. <laughs> I don't know how she knew Ethan's name. Maybe she was at the Burger Hut earlier and heard us talking. Like we wouldn't have noticed a bizarre gypsy ordering a cheeseburger and fries. I don't know, Whitney. I'm trying to figure this thing out, the same as you. How could anybody think that my father would want to commit murder? Look, you can't let what some Looney Tunes fortune teller said make you this upset. Fortune teller? What's the matter, baby? Nothing, Daddy. Don't shine me, Whitney. Now I want to know what's making my beautiful girl cry. It's really nothing, Coach Russell. We were just over at the fortune teller's tent, and the woman telling the fortunes was kind of a jerk. There is no fortune telling tent this year. Well, sure there is, over by the pier. I'm gonna go find this woman. Nobody hurts my baby's feelings and gets away with it. Don't tell me you're still worried about TC. Caught in the act. Thanks, Sam. So is the crime rate in Harmony so low you don't have anything better to do than to get me a soda? Well, as a matter of fact, it is. Not going wood. Oh. <laughs> Listen, uh, this thing with uh, TC, uh, is it a real problem? Oh, no, not the way you mean. I mean, there's no better husband or father in the world. Present company excluded, of course. He and I come from the same cloth. There's nothing more important to us than our families. I just wish he had your temperament, Sam. What are you talking about? T.C. is as gentle as a kitten. Well, unless he thinks his family's being threatened. Then something snaps inside of him and he becomes a different person. That's the part of him I worry about, Sam. Oh, 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 what happened to you? Jimmy almost drowned and it's all your fault. For me. Oh, stop whining. You drip dry. <laughs> oh, Timmy, you should have seen me. I was in my glory. <laughs> I've already ruined one goody two shoes day. <laughs> ah, so many more dreams to dash, so little time. <laughs> <laughs> said, no, Charity, we can't go public. Why not? What are we hiding from? You have no idea how much I would like to tell you. Then please tell me. Why do you keep things from me? Charity, I am doing the best I can. You have to trust me on this. Sometimes I get lonely. There's this whole world out there and I'm not a part of it. And you tell me it's for my own good, but don't I get a chance to decide for myself? There are so many things that you have no experience with. That's what I mean. Give me a chance to have those experiences. Let me go out and see things and meet people and... Like this. A carnival in harmony. I've never even been to a carnival. Harmony's all the way out on the coast. It's not that far. Could we go, Mom? Please? For once, could we go somewhere and see something new? Grace! It's almost time. 
She's coming. You're back. Grace, what is it? Who did you think was here? What is it, Grace? What just happened? It was... it was a little girl again, Sam. I didn't see her, but I heard her, clear as day. Honey, look for yourself. There is no little girl around no, here. No, she was here. She said, someone's coming. She's on her way. Charity, it's, it's not a good idea. Please, Mom. What harm could it possibly do to go to one little carnival? All right. You win. Oh, thanks, Mom. You won't regret it, I uh. promise. <sighs> Gwen's a great girl, and she loves you so much, Ethan. Don't let her get away. <laughs> I won't. Good. I've got to run. Sean Luke's taking me out tonight to celebrate. Have fun. Oh, I intend to. Bye. I'll call you tomorrow. You are the most handsome man I have ever seen. And you are the most beautiful woman. I don't know about that, but I am the happiest. I can't have Jean-Luc. Neither can you, Mademoiselle Sheridan Crane. I've never seen your dad so mad. I wish you wouldn't have told him where the gypsy tent was, Teresa. Are you scared what it'll do? It's not like your dad's really a killer. Shut up, Teresa. That's not even funny at all. I'm sorry. You know, you ought to be. None of this would have happened if it wasn't for you and your obsession with Ethan Crane. I said I was sorry. I gotta go find my mother. Maybe she can stop my father before it's too late. You know what you are, Tabitha? You're an evil old witch. Thank you, Timmy. <laughs> and the beauty part of it is that you're the only one who thinks so. <laughs> Most people know me as a harmless, dotty old lady. <laughs> and in this get-up, they don't even know me as that. <laughs> Here, hide, hide, round the back. For you, sir. Forget about it, lady. Fun's over. I'm on to you. I know exactly who you are. I've never heard Sheridan so happy. Imagine knowing someone so much you're willing to commit your whole life to them. Gwen? <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. You're so happy you're crying for Sharon. <laughs> it's it's great news. It's great news. You softie. No wonder I love you so much. Whitney was right. It's my fault all these horrible things have been happening. When I fall out of love with someone, I still want to marry Ethan. Thank you.